O.C. were married, Oscar Charles Bolt took over as CEO of Bolt Construction Company. This would mark the third generation of family leadership and an era of growth that could hardly have been imagined by his forefathers. With the same kind of vision and values as his father and grandfather before him, O.C. realized that taking risk was a part of what was needed to move the business forward. He needed equipment to take the next step into commercial markets if Bolt Construction was to survive. Part of the success of the business was a opportunity that my dad saw on a particular project. So he went to uh, the bank and said, I'm going to be submitting a price on this project and if I were able to have this buy this piece of equipment, I think I can have a very competitive bid. And the bank turned him down. So he was persistent and he went to just about every bank in town and they he heard the same story until he went to Gus Silke at Appleton State Bank. Gus lent him the money. Using that piece of equipment, we got the contract and um, paid the loan back early. It seemed Gus Silke, president of Appleton State Bank, was the only banker in town to fully recognize the character and capacity of this young Oscar Bolt and approved a $30,000 loan for equipment and expansion. It was the start of a long and close relationship. Driven by OC's initiative and enthusiasm, Bolt Construction entered into more complicated construction jobs. And my dad always told the story about the, that the first building was, was built by Turner Construction, which was a big national construction company. And they were doing big projects in Boston and New York and California and Chicago. And so the notion was that they would come and do the other half. And my dad said, OC came to see him at one time and said, is there any chance that you could give us the contract for building the other half? And he got it. And it was the first big project that Bolt Company did. Bolt Construction was really increasing business. When the rest of the industry was declining, Oscar was hiring more workers. There's a story about a police officer seeing a light on at the office and said, what's going on here? And he said, thought somebody was maybe trying to break in and Oscar said, I'm trying to break out. <laughs> so that's how overwhelmed with work he was and that's how seriously he took it. Even up into his uh, you know, mid 90s, he was in the office a lot. The real opportunity at the time was in the pulp and paper industry. Oscar's breakthrough job was installing a paper machine for Thilmany in the mid-1960s. It didn't take long before Bolt had built a reputation for being the number one paper machine installer in the country. We had some early work at Tilmany, and we were just doing buildings, but he always had his eye on the machines. He thought those were the places that were pretty interesting. And again, through people, by hiring the right kinds of expertise, they were able to convince Tilmany that we could rebuild a paper machine. So we took a lot of the experience that we learned in the pulp and paper industry, the heavy industrial experience, and started to apply it in the power and energy business. And we did that with a number of sectors, like the food industry, the plastics industry, the automotive industry. In 1967, O.C. initiated profit sharing, a novel idea in its day. With his inherent commitment to making life better for others, Oscar had the natural foresight to think about the retirement of his employees. This whole concept, he wanted to be a good employer, he wanted to provide for families. He saw that certainly with his dad. Early on, he had a good living for the people that worked for him. That was a key part of his business philosophy. But probably one of my favorite parts of my job was administering the retirement plan and seeing firsthand how that affected the lives of the employees. And he wanted to make sure people had a voice. He always wanted to make sure that his leaders treated people with respect, that they communicated well, and that was very important to him. By the end of the 1960s, Bolt was achieving $22 million in sales and ranking among the largest construction companies in the nation. It was in 1970, while Oscar was preparing to bid on a large project for Kimberly Clark, that his father passed away. The deadline for submitting bids on the KC Research Center was the day after his dad's funeral, but it was a deadline Oscar met, 
and Bolt Construction won the contract. That Kimberly Clark project was a milestone and Oscar's dad would have been proud. It proved to be a springboard for building larger and more diverse facilities in new markets. As a result, Bolt expanded their reach into the healthcare sector. Once again, Oscar proved himself to be a pragmatic risk taker. Bolt entered into yet another field in which they were a novice, but through experience and strong values, emerged as an industry leader. O.C. Bolt opened his very first branch office in Wausau in 1971. In the mid-70s, Oscar asked his two sons to join the company. Chuck worked as a project manager, and Tom worked in marketing. Pat and O.C.'s daughter Peggy would also play an advisory role. In 1977, Oscar had the unique opportunity to set up a satellite office in Saudi Arabia. The experience of building and managing projects overseas was a game changer. It was one of the best marketing tools that we ever had because you know people say, oh, you're doing work in Saudi Arabia, you know, you're building hospitals. No, we're not building hospitals, but that was pretty novel at the time. Early on in my dad's career, they got a contract at Ripon College, and he said he had a really tough time getting anybody to go and work on that job because it was so far away. Not long after, Methodist University Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, invited Oscar to bid on a large expansion project. He went down to Memphis. Memphis needed some hospitals re rebuilt. Here was O.C. Bolt from Wisconsin. And I guess as they were gathering toward the point where they were thinking of hiring him, the chairman of them said, well, Mr. Bolt, what would be the most difficult part of this job? It's a way down from Wisconsin. And O.C. said, well, the most difficult part would be getting the contract. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> it was precisely that confidence, together with Bolt's values, that realized incredible expansion throughout the 80s and 90s. Sales continued to grow from 15 million to 300 million in just a 15 year period. From a very small local company to now a billion dollar national platform came in many stages, a number of them before my time. But I think the common thread that goes through all of that is being able to look out and see where are the opportunities or where could the opportunities be. In April of 1995, the nation was rocked by the domestic terrorist attack in Oklahoma City. The Oklahoma team immediately shut down local projects, knowing Oscar would support the decision. This allowed hundreds of workers and equipment to be relocated to the bomb site to help stabilize the building and ensure it didn't collapse on rescue teams. Bolt stayed on site until the end at a cost to the company of $300,000. Oscar Bolt never sent a bill to anyone. I think what happened in Oklahoma City is a good example of, hey, let's stop what we're doing right now. Let's see how we can jump in and help. And we remobilized a lot of our equipment from the university there in Oklahoma to the bombing site to help with the you know, work to, to try to save lives and it was a very meaningful thing that we would never think twice about, just did it. Throughout the 90s, Bolt grew in sectors of power and energy, healthcare, education, and industrial manufacturing, and established new industry standards that improved workflow, efficiencies, safety, and quality to the benefit of clients, employees, contractors, communities, and the environment. In 1998, Tom became CEO and the fourth generation of Bolts to lead the company. Bob DeCook joined as COO and Oscar became chairman of the board. By this time, the Bolt Company was ranking among the top 100 largest construction firms in America. Though Oscar stepped aside as CEO at the age of 74, he remained chairman of the board. And in some respect, his real work was just beginning. He was actively sought for consult and made site visits well into his 90s. Through it all, he remained a beacon for the values on which Bull Construction had been founded. Honesty, fairness, hard work, performance, and the love of construction. The honesty and fairness starts to get you thinking about other things like uh, respect and integrity and 
treatment of people and transparency and all of those values are so important to him. And that's how he ran the company. He always said, people first have to live the values. And he'd always say, if you get the values right, everything else will follow. From the Sutter Health Cathedral Hill Hospital in San Francisco, Bolt's first $1 billion project, to all the Appleton area relationships Oscar maintained throughout his career, the YMCA, Bergstrom Automotive, Lawrence University, Thrivent, Kimberly Clark, St. Elizabeth Hospital, the list goes on and on. Perhaps above all else, Oscar's greatest passion project was building the Fox City's Performing Arts Center, which he began working on at the ripe young age of 76. John Gilbert and I sat and talked about that, and uh, he said to me, well, what do you think we should do? I think we should offer to pay for 25% of it. And uh, before long, he had gone to uh, John Bergstrom and said, we're willing to do this if you're willing to share the community effort to raise the rest. And then John, of course, turned around and both of them independently went to Oscar and said, can you build this? One of the first meetings that I ever had for the PAC project, OC took those of us in the room in a historical walk where he and his grandfather would come downtown to get ice cream. What Oscar did during those fundraising receptions is he talked about his own childhood. He would then paint this wonderful picture of these school buses full of children from all over the greater Fox Cities and beyond coming to the Performing Arts Center and being educated and inspired. And that in turn really inspired so many people to contribute to the PEC. And what a memory he had. There was a ravine where they wanted to build the PAC and they filled it in with junk. He remembered these ravines and he remembered exactly where the, the ravine was and he said the, the line of the ravine is right here and you can start your foundations from this spot over and he was right on. He never did do a proposal. He never told us how much it was going to cost. He basically said, how much have you got? He did some figuring once on the back of a napkin, and then somebody said to him, well, how much would it be to add the Kimberly Clark Theater? So he uh, <laughs> turned the napkin over and did some <laughs> noodling on it and gave us a number and said, this is only as good as this napkin, but here, here's a number. From his oversight on design to his insight on excavation, taking in the whir of construction, scampering down ramps and up scaffolding, all of it alongside crews half his age. Everybody's expertise said, you're not gonna get it done until the end of 2003. So we watched him every day be there. It was OC who was really overseeing the entire construction of this. Even though he had people on his team who were making it happen, OC was there all the time. We never dreamt the impact that we would have on children because of the Performing Arts Center, because of OC. The Fox City's Performing Arts Center stands as a pinnacle of all that Oscar Bolt, the builder, believed in. Community, education, the arts, and excellence. This art of labor stands as a testament to the human spirit, a building far greater than the sum of its parts, greater than its design and engineering, or the careful assembly of its steel, concrete, wood, and masonry. It's a building where dreams come true, seeing as it is, after all, the house that Oscar built. <laughs>